Hen, re, re, ro, ro, hen, gar, gar, dur, dur. I thought, you know, three at bats, game over, here comes the World Series. And then I discovered my fastball, it was gone. You know, it's been 30 years, and I'm instantly back in that moment. It was completely unlikely to be drafted to the Cubs at the age of 12 at all, let alone the potential of going to the World Series if we won this game. The Cubbies are one inning away from the division championship, completing the most improbable season in baseball history. Going into the inning, I was feeling good. I was gonna come in, you know, throw uh, nine strikes and call it a day. I certainly didn't anticipate what was about to happen next. And it appears nothing can stop Rowan Gardner now. I was, uh, you know, confidently uh, heading to the mound, saying hi to uh, my mom and my friends, and then I hit the deck. Winding up my arm, I could feel the, the looseness. That was it. I was gonna lose the game for everyone. Play ball! At this moment in time, I have no idea what's about to go down. Well, not his best stuff, ball one. I thought, okay, well, walking him seems like a good idea because I can't throw fast. Ball four, take it there. Come here, come here, bring it in. I wanted to let the team know that I had lost my arm, my fastball, that it was gone. Let, let's talk about your fastball because you relied on that one pitch for the entire season. You know, relying on one pitch at the age of 12, uh, looking back on it, seems completely crazy. At the time, it was the thing I had. Listen, my, my arm, it's gone. Without the fastball, I can't really face them from the mound to the plate. So the only way that I can get them out is to get them to first base. From the team meeting, I came to the mound and I was making sure not to put my feet on the actual pitcher's plate so that I wouldn't be called for a balk once I revealed that I did not have the ball. The hidden ball trick. The hidden ball trick. What I did with White, I couldn't use the hidden ball trick again, but I had, you know, one more trick up my sleeve that I was gonna pull to, to fake him out. So it was all about the intentional walk. I just needed to get him to run with White. I had to lull him into a false sense of security to steal the base and, and this time have the ball when he thinks that I don't. Oops. What are you doing, kid? I dare you to run. The game of chicken. Hey, cut it out. Let's play some ball here. If you really think about it, it's kind of a different hidden ball trick. <laughs> the anti-hidden ball trick, so to speak. As an adult, I would never come up with that idea now, but I did then, and it seemed kind of like the only option. In all of the stress of losing my arm, I don't think I really looked very closely at the lineup, and it was in this next moment that I realized my misstep. I don't think I was expecting him as the next at bat, so it kind of wavered my confidence a little bit to see him in the batter's box. So we're gonna flash back here because it wasn't your first time facing Hado. You're just gonna make it hurt, huh? On August 11th, 1993, my debut at Wrigley, Sal really didn't want to put me in and, and 
And I was okay with that. I was just happy to be a cub. But then I did, and I'm in. this is a feeling that I'll never forget. I'm in. There were 35,002 fans in the stands, and I was kind of like walking on air. They were all chanting my name. I'm going to the mound and I can't believe it. In the moment, I was just doing my best to survive. So I, th I thought, okay, the arm's gonna, you know, hopefully get me through this, but I didn't really have control of it uh, at, in this game. Oh, Hato. I knew that Hato was a big hitter larger than life character. But, you know, I thought for sure maybe he, he couldn't hit my fast fastball. Of course, Hato slammed my fastball. He really rubbed it in my face right there saying, this one's for mommy, boo hoo hoo. The last one with Hato. That was weighing on me through the course of the season. And in the playoffs, when he came up at bat again, it all kind of came rushing back to me. And now I was facing him without a fastball. Luckily, there was sort of a, a brilliant idea. You know, the catcher told me to throw the fastball and just make them think I just wasn't using the fastball, but not that I didn't have it. became my first time of, of throwing, not a fastball, but the changeup at about 46 miles an hour. That's probably even below a changeup, really. Now, I'm feeling like he won't be expecting the changeup again, and he likes fastballs, so I, I threw him another changeup. You know, it's one of those moments where time slows down, thinking that I had just lost the game until at the very, very end, it just barely missed the foul pole. I mean, at this point, I was out of ideas. I was just sort of thinking, just like I don't want to let my friends down, I didn't want to let the Cubs down. And when all else fails, we call mom. She was constantly doing this quote unquote throw all the time, but the pitch is called the floater. And so in that moment, I, I had this newfound confidence that I could throw a different pitch. A pitch from, from softball coming into the major leagues that Hato would not expect and that he wouldn't be able to hit. I knew that we were going to the World Series for the first time in 85 years. I threw the perfect strike floater pitch I may only have a 46 mile an hour fastball, but I still have the floater pitch. I guess I did sort of peak at 12, but I think I did it on my own terms. So I don't really see it as peaking, but you know, who knows? Maybe the Cubs will bring me back as a manager one day. I mean, they have brought other ex-players to manage the team. 